The implementation of urban renewal projects in the Vine City neighborhood in Metro Atlanta reveals social and economic significance of urban renewal nationally. There are major problems throughout the history of Vine City due to urban renewal projects within the neighborhood. Blight has never been more prevalent than it is now, and this is a result of projects in the past and ongoing projects today. Vine City could possibly see social and economic changes with the building of one of the world's newest, most infamous venues, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. The area of Vine City in downtown Atlanta, Georgia, has had numerous efforts and redevelopment plans throughout its history that all have a lot of the same goals implemented in their visions. The Vine City Civic Association is a group that envisions the best redevelopment plan for the struggling neighborhood of Vine City. The Vine City Redevelopment Plan, orchestrated by the Vine City Civic Association, came up with a redevelopment plan that consists of three main parts, issues and opportunities, project definition, and action plan. With multiple past redevelopment plans still ongoing and the new building of the Mercedes-Benz Stadium next to the Vine City neighborhood, the future of West Side Atlanta could see drastic changes. But first, we need to understand the neighborhood's past. Curdon purchased land in what is now known as Vine City and built his home at 587 University Place in Atlanta. Curdon is also credited for being the founder of Atlanta Life Insurance Company. It is now available to the public on the west side. The Great Atlanta Fire of 1917 that happened on Auburn Avenue forced many African American residents to find new homes, in which they did on the west side of downtown in the Vine City neighborhood. There was much violence in trying to stop the African-American people from migrating to the west side of Atlanta after the fire. Racial tension and divide among the residents of Vine City still hold effects present in the community today. In 1941, Herdon Homes' public housing projects opened on the west side, which led to the increase of African-American population in that area. Previously known as Hunter Street, Martin Luther King Jr. Drive was home to many white business owners in the 1940s, but soon African-American business owners started taking over these businesses. There is evidence that at one time Vine City was in fact a thriving community with small shops on each corner and even an amusement park, but with urban renewal underway in the 1960s and 70s, Vine City lost much of what made it special and these characteristics have since vanished in present day. Vine City was losing most of its population with suburbanization underway in the 1970s, and the neighborhood gradually attracted drug users and sellers, which ultimately led to an impoverished neighborhood characterized by drugs, abandoned houses, and violence. 41% of the people in Vine City live well below the poverty line today, and half of the households present today in this area make less than $22,366 a year. With a history of low income, families surrounded by poverty, and all-time high crime rates, the people of Vine City are looking for a change. My intuition is telling me there'll be better days. Life is tough.